Okay, welcome back. So, um, if you've been around here a while, I don't know, since like maybe last summer, you might remember this bar song here. This is a Chroma V1. It was a 3D printed bar song built by Chroma Bar Song. I'll put his links in the description for you. Um, yeah, I did a review for it back last summer. The idea kind of behind this whole thing, at least, I think this is what Chrome was going for, was a um, affordable, you know, EU-based, it's kind of a competitor to the Squiddy, other 3D printed bar songs, but the, the idea was that it was EU-based and it was cheap to kind of ship around the world, because uh, if you're in the EU or anywhere other than America, getting a hold of a Squiddy or a Tay Flipper or any anything like that can be really difficult, because you're hit with massive shipping fees and taxes and whatnot. And it takes a Squiddy up to about $120 for a piece of plastic. So he was kind of like, oh, you know what? I'll create something that is more affordable and easier to get a hold of for the EU, for the rest of the world. I mean, he ships worldwide, you know? Um, and I like this parcel a lot, you know, there's a few downsides. Uh, that's mostly due to having to make it affordable and cheap. Um, you know, it was his first product, so wasn't expecting too much. But at the end of the day, it's it's not a bad parcel. I, I like it, it flips well. Um, it was, yeah, it was good. But um, it doesn't feel very solid, as you can hear. It's a bit rattly, has a few downsides. Lack of weight's a bit annoying, makes it flip a little weird. You've got to kind of force it around itself. Uh, to do tricks. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. And it's also not the most durable thing in the world. I mean, I've snapped the blade off of this before. I had to spare a replacement blade, luckily, but um, yeah, because it's so thin, it snapped very really easily. And uh, you know, it wasn't, it isn't the best. And so, Chroma released the V2. Now this, fixes a lot of the uh, issues that the V1 has. Um, things like durability, flipping, um, general quality and feel. And uh, I'll go over that now. As you can see, it has this uh, beautiful faux channel construction. You have um, full length spacers, hidden Zen pins, very useful and grippy jimping. And it fixes a lot of the problems that the V1 had. Um, things like um, weight. So this is, I think, 2.66 ounces. Uh, the original was a lot lighter. It fixes things like durability. You can see the size of this blade here. It's really thin. That's why it snapped on me. With the V2, however, just look at the difference in blade thickness. You've almost got double the thickness there. Um, for the blade and that really improves the uh, the durability and the quality of this bar saw. Um, it has an upgraded uh, weight system, so it's a lot heavier. Uh, I'll quickly show a picture of the inside of the channels. So you can see it has um, those dowels like hidden all the way down and uh, well one this increases this increases the weight and two, it increases durability, so it feels a lot more solid. If I try and push these channels together, there is no mo um, movement in that. You know, if I try and push this channel in, it really feels like a solid, well-built product. Um, sound, too, is massively improved. It has a lot of bounce and, uh, you know, vibration to it key signs of a quality product and i think this is because one of the weighted system two we have better hardware now so we have these nice more better quality they're still um allen key but they fit a lot better and they are you know the tolerance is a lot tighter on this obviously it still has tap and play because it's made of plastic and plastic bends but um, it just feels a lot more solid and well put together. 
you see the Zen pins here are actually like uh, proper Zen pins, whereas before they were just kind of these screws that he'd screwed through. And while they worked, they weren't the best. They kind of chewed up the Zen nipple here, if I show you. They kind of chewed up the edges of the Zen nipple and uh, this closed the handle gap up really quickly. Uh, with this one, obviously smooth Zen pins make will make it a lot better and uh, the Zen nipple is also a lot thicker and wider now. Well, not wider, but uh, taller. So I have a feeling this will not be as much of a problem. The handle gap has remained perfectly fine, although I've only owned this for about a week. That was on the bite handle. Speaking of bite handle, um, the bite handle indicator works really well. It feels really good in the fact that it hurts when you um, go on it. Not like actually hurts, but it tells you that it's there. He does 3D print these bite handle indicators, which I have no idea where mine has gone. Um, genuinely, I've lost it already. But it's a 3D printed bite handle indicator. It's kind of a little rubber band that goes around there. It doesn't weigh anything, so it doesn't really change the balance. But um, yeah, that's kind of cool. He'll give you one of those. Obviously, because the blade is symmetrical design, when it's closed, you can't see which handle you're on, unless you get the custom colors, which I'll talk about in a minute. You can't see which is the bite and which is the uh, safe. So that does come in useful. But yeah, as for quality, it's a lot, it's a, a lot more uh, well-built and solid platform than the V1. It doesn't rattle around. It doesn't, it doesn't feel cheap, put it that way. It feels very expensive, not expensive, but um, quality. That's the only word I can really use to describe it. It's, it's just well put together and it, it feels like a finished product. Whereas the V1, while it was good, and while it, I'd say it's still worth the price, um, it's rattly, you know. You can hear, it makes loads of noise when you flip it. It just doesn't feel the best because it's really lightweight as well. The added weighting system in the new model really does, uh, I think, improve the uh, flipping experience. So, you want one for yourself. Now, I think these start at 50, do uh, 50 euro, not dollars, 50 euro uh, for the base model. The base model is a preset color options which he drops. Uh, right now, I think he's dropping white and black. So it's a white handles, black channel, black blade, or you can get black channels and a black blade with white handles. Wait, is that what I just said? I'll just show you. I can't remember what I thought I just said. So you have two color options, basically. There's like Oreo and reverse Oreo. Um, these are $50, or 50 euros, as you can see. And they haven't sold out yet, but there's not a lot left, so go buy them. Some quick specs, uh, 2.66 grams. Same length as a Kraken, actually. Um, if I pull out a Kraken, as you can see. Same length as a Kraken, which is nice because I like the fact that Krakens are longer than most other bar songs. But yeah, um, or if you want a custom model like I've got with this um, blue and purple or any colors you want, I'll show you the colors list, uh, that will be $60. So if I go on here, you can make a custom one and um, you can choose all sorts of things. You can choose the bite handle color, which is this outer bit. You can choose the safe handle color. They can be separate uh, as well as the channel colors or the uh, spacer colors, sorry. So you can get really tons of customizability. You can choose whether you want, um, you can choose whether you want a black or white blade, so inked or just normal. There's really a bunch of color, like customization for this knife, and I would definitely recommend you pick up one of those ones and get your custom colors like I did. 100% worth it. If you have a V1, if you bought a V1, he will give you money off, actually. I think it's five euros or something like that, which can pay for your shipping. Um, he'll give you money off your purchase for a V2, which is kind of cool. Um, for shipping, he does ship worldwide. You can find the shipping prices, but I remember them. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to give you the colors, didn't I? 
So you can get purple, pink, yellow, orange, teal, green, and then obviously the black and white. The blade options are black and white, as you can see. And then that's the example order. So I gave, what would I have given? I gave um, black bite handle, black safe handle. Um, I gave a purple bite handle spacer, teal safe handle spacer, and black blade. That was the order I put in. And uh, he gave me this. Perfectly matching that order, obviously. Mm. I would definitely recommend you go pick up a custom one. I feel like it's really the selling point of this, well, one of the selling points of this knife, uh, although it's the price and the quality and the flipping as well, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, the colors, so cool. Not a lot of other people really give you this sort of customizability. Maybe the edit, but no one else really gives you the customizability that Chrome is offering with this product. Shipping is 10 euro for the um, for worldwide. If you're in the EU, it's slightly less with five euro. And if you're in Germany, then it's free. He'll just ship it to you for free. Um, this is really good compared to other options like the Squiddy or uh, like the Tay Flipper or the Edit because they really get you with the shipping prices if you don't live in America. For the Squiddy, you can pay paying like $30 shipping, which you really don't want to be doing. If you're buying a Squiddy outside of America, you are wasting your money. So yeah, so cheap international shipping. Um, I think it's a really good option for the price, like genuinely. He's priced these really well and really competitively. I don't know how much profit he's making per knife, but I can imagine. He is not scamming you, putting it that way. Not like Squid is with the Squiddy. And so the moment you've all been waiting for, how does this thing flip? Very well. Well, actually, I have a few good points and a few bad points. And this is the first real bad points that I'm gonna give this battle song because uh, everything up to this has been really promising. And I will say now before I start, this is not a deal breaker at all. Genuinely, this thing flips good. There will be a few points that I'll make that are bad, but it is not a deal breaker. So hear me out and let me explain them first. So balance wise, it's a handle bias. It has obviously the weights in the handles, which make it slightly more than the blade, but it's not a bad handle bias. As you can see, it still fans really well. Let me throw some fans for you. Fans forever. Choker fans are good. Um, palm fans, backhand fans, all work really well. If I don't drop it. Um, so the handlebar is, uh, while it is handlebar, is not too much. Not like the uh, Kraken trainer, let's say, which is getting on the edge of too much. I think uh, Panic, actually, Panic Flips on YouTube, put it best when he said, uh, it feels, I think he said it flips like a Kraken or it feels like a 3D printed Kraken or something like that. And I, I kind of agree with him. Um, just the way it puts, it's put together, the way it flips and feels, reminds me of my Kraken, which is why I guess I like it so much. Um, obviously, you know my bias towards the Krakens. But this is an unbiased review, and I'll talk about the downsides now. Um, the weight distribution is not ideal. It's not bad. Genuinely, flips fine. You can see I've been flipping it fine. Um, but it has weight, uh, obviously all throughout the handle with these pins that go down the center. And this means that it lacks the end, end weight in the handles. Um, the blade is fine, but the handles lack some end weight. And this can cause not problems, but learning difficulties with some rollovers and things like that that require you to carry momentum. Um, for chaplains, it's fine. For ladders, it's all right. I can't really ladder very well, so I can't really give you a good opinion on that. Um, 
for aerials. It's very good. You've seen I've been aerial, doing loads of aerials, things like scissors, um, even the finger pass arounds like this. I guess they're ladders. Um, you know, it flips really well, but some rollovers like the behind the eight ball and the uh, whip rollover require a little bit of uh, learning to get used to because you kind of have to push it around. Um, it doesn't have too much tip weight and so your momentum is sort of lacking. It's still there. It's a lot better than things like the V1 and uh, other, like the Squiddy for instance, other plastic valve songs, but it is a learning curve if you've come from aluminium or titanium uh, knives that have a lot of momentum or, you know, a really built with momentum in mind, like the Kraken or the Chab. So again, this is not a deal breaker at all. It's just different. And I can go from flipping this to flipping a Kraken perfectly fine, you know? I say as I fuck up the Kraken flips, but no, like genuinely. I can switch to other knives perfectly fine, but it's it does take a little getting used to with the um, kind of pushing it around. And this is not, you know, a deal breaker. It's just going to be something that you're going to have to learn again. Like that whip roller for uh, look, roll over, for instance. You just got to push it because the momentum isn't there in those cases. But. I stand by, it's a good flipper. Um, I genuinely enjoy it. I find myself picking it up over my Kraken a lot because it's unique and it's something different. It's TSA safe, which is cool because I might take this to Poland when I go in the summer. Sorry, I'm trying to learn some new things like the giraffe, but uh, I'm struggling to get the transition right. There we go, that was sort of all right. <laughs> But yeah, um, I would break this knife quite quite high, or this trainer, quite high. I feel like I feel like it is a genuinely good. Um, uh, what do you call it? Upgrade from the V1, which is what he was going for. I feel like you really have Chrome has really fixed everything that was wrong, or pretty much everything that was wrong with the uh, V1. Yeah, it's more comfortable. It's more durable. Uh, flips better, carries its momentum better, um, obviously not perfectly, but better. And I feel like it's just genuinely a very well-built product. I would say buy one of these, especially if you're a collector. And I'm gonna do a little bit of chroma shilling here, as uh, Pyro and uh, Clamps might point out. But you should buy one, like genuinely. I think they're worth the money. Maybe, Maybe there are better aluminium options like the Falcon for this price, but if you want something custom, collectible, if you want something 3D printed, because you haven't tried it yet, I would say this is a perfect option. I want to get an edit light to compare it to this because I feel like that's pretty much a bang on comparison, um, but we'll see. I don't really want to be spending too much money on Barsons right now. Ooh, that's by handle. But yeah, you should buy one. I really like it. Um, congrats to Chroma. If you're watching this video, you have made a genuinely good product and that I am very, you know, happy with. And I would buy one of these again, for sure. I'm not going to, because I'm never going to sell this one. But I'm very happy to have this as part of my collection. So thank you for such a sick product. Um, yeah, go buy Chroma, Chroma Shield, Chroma Shield, Chroma Shield.